Welcome back everyone to the Thousand Week Reich. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and right now we need to talk about controlling the oil. Where once it was coal, now oil is the lifeblood of modern nations. Oil powers the industries and technologies of the day, and with more and more of global industry and transportation relying on it, it would be a great advantage for us to control, or to continue to have control, over the oil resources of the Middle East. And so this should inform our foreign policy. We can't let those pesky Arabs control their own oil. Oil is a future in which we basically just finish the focus, control the oil. Um, let's be approaching Iraq. We can secure the Iraqi supply of oil, though this task might be easier said than done. Iraqi views of us have been cold since the war, and they might not be excited to enter uh, into any deals with us. Nonetheless, we should still sit down with ba Baghdad. Oh no! We already suppressed any sort of unrest. Independence, hope all Nigerians get along well. TBA. I tried, but guys, I really tried. I'm trying to stop decolonization as best and as fast as possible, but... Sometimes it's just not meant to be while we're suffering a lot of stuff here. Okay, then. Um, give me half of you guys and head on down to Africa because Africa has better infrastructure, right? Uh, I'll come down here to Ceylon. There you go. Get out of there. Paying off the debt? Nice. And Stevenson and Ocarina? I thought Dewey won. Eh, whatever it is, but it's. Ah, oh, that's so disappointing. Uh, Ninamdi Aki Azikiwi. Kiwe. Something like that. Well, I guess we don't do the resistance anymore from there, but still. Still. Uh, how are you still suffering this much supply issues? Oh, is it because of the state? Okay, it's because of the state. Or exercise. No, it's because, oh, it's because of exercise? Ah, okay, well, stop exercising then. You look really bad. My bad. Oh, well, whatever. And approach Iraq, followed up with infantry support. Despite mechanization, it's clear that the war cannot be won with machines alone. We will start requiring support from regular infantrymen in our advances. The question of Iraq. The Kingdom of Iraq was established from part of the remains of the oil Ottoman Empire as a protector under our control. With its resources of oil and strategic location in the Middle East, it served and still does serve as an important regional base for our influence. While Iraq has since drifted towards greater independence with the rise of German-backed Syria, maintaining our influence in the region is as important as ever. Should we support Iraq, and if so, how should we get us go about supporting it? Send weapons. Guarantee their independence. It's not worth it. I mean, you are now literally our puppet, so technically, yeah. He's kind of happy. Look at them. We dispose other people in the house of Hashim, and he's like, Faisal is like smiling because he has to, or he'll get shot by the British. Is that the Jewish state? Gurian, and then we have Social Democrats, Palestine, Fakiri, Fakri, Nashash Ibi, Nashash Ibi. All right, well. Huh. Okay, cool. That's kind of cool. Alright, so after this whole infantry thing, infantry support, we're going to jump down here and continue doing what? Uh, develop Kuwait oil infrastructure after we do, of course, carrier primacy. And what else? It is 57. How's the land auction coming along? Let's do a salt concentration, because we can. Mm, ties with the Saudis. Although we have never ruled them directly, Britain has had ties with the Saudis through our colonies in Oman, Yemen, and the smaller states of the Gulf. Through the use of these ties, we can secure a deal on the export of Saudi oil to Britain. Uh, we got a couple comments. They did say that if we did get enough likes to play, or enough likes in the last video, um, I will play eventually probably the People's Republic of Germany, or the, you know, the, the left-wing Germany that arose out of the ashes of the German Civil War, which was a war against the Toronto Accords. Um, some people recommended that I play as, like, I think, some guy named Stolp, who said it was, like, he'll form, like, some sort of, like, North Korean version of Germany, which sounds kind of cool. Probably not good for the Germans, but sounds really cool. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. And someone also wants me to play as Otto Strasser. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, definitely. Uh, yeah, develop the oil... Cool. Uh, Kuwaiti oil infrastructure. The states around the Persian Gulf are our greatest bases of influence in the Middle East today. And out of them, Kuwait has the greatest supply of oil. In order to tap into that market, we can offer the Kuwaitis, uh, Kuwaitis a technical assistance in exchange for barrels. Barrels of monkey? No, probably barrels of oil. And actually, where are we for GP? Hey, we're still actually third. We actually kept our place so far. France is not too far behind us. And we're close to the Chinese, but the Chinese are probably doing pretty darn well. You know... That's a big Republic of China. Now, I'm wondering when the USSR is going to go to war with the Russian Republic. It's Vlasov here, right? Yeah, Vlasov. I talked with Saudi Arabia. Since the victory against the Ottoman Empire during the First World War, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has always been somewhat of a British regional ally, but due to its then poverty and isolation, its usefulness was debatable. More recently, however, with vast oil reserves being discovered in the country, it is clear that Saudi Arabia is an extremely useful potential strategic partner in the region. Not only would control of their oil reserves be in the British interest, but the wealth from oil could fuel their country into becoming a wealthy regional power and as one of its friendly towards Britain and its allies, able to counter German and Italian influence in the Middle East. As a result, it is agreed that we should send a delegation to prove 
ties with the kingdom, but how far should we go in pushing for greater friendship and cooperation? One proposal has been made to make a comprehensive deal with the salaries. Britain will guarantee their independence and promise to intervene militarily should be threatened, while in return British companies will be given extensive ownership and rights over a large portion of Saudi Arabia's oil resources. This deal will consist of, of course, improve our control over the region's oil, but could also drag us further into the regional geopolitics by binding us to a defensive alliance of sorts. Try to make the deal? Try to make the deal. And approach Iran. Opening the Gauntlet International. What an airport! Very cool! Iran, of course. Oh, they refuse. Despite a warm uh, welcome to our diplomatic missions, the Saudi government has unfortunately rejected our proposed deal, seeing that further foreign profiting from its oil reserves is at too high a price to pay. What a shame. Well, can we invade them now? Uh, we need that oil. But Iran is another Middle Eastern state with a great deal of oil, but we do not have as much influence in the region as we do in the Arabian Peninsula. We m we'll have to meet with Tehran directly, and they might not give us what we really, really want. Which is quite unfortunate, as we're building ourselves up more. Um, we have a lot of things we could do here, but we're not going to do it yet. Actually, we could probably replace this guy. But we get more political power, but it hurts our consumer goods. And we have enough PP anyways. Liberal, huh? So, George Oliver, David Maxwell Fife, as well as Robert Gascon Cecile. Well, I don't like the consumer goods that we get taken away. We lose some population, but we do get plus 0 0.05 more political power. We, get, we lose resources in factories, which is something not really good, though. Mm, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. And let's go ahead and do uh, approach Iran. Followed up with finalized military doctrine. We have finished determining our military doctrine. It's time to look to the future now and hope our new tactics pay off on the battlefield. Sounds really good to us. Even though I could be focusing more on this stuff, but whatever. The winds have changed. Oh crap, no. Um, you know what? Screw it. After this one, we're just going to keep going down this way. Ensure stability. The colonies are not most useful to us when their own affairs are kept steady. Providing our colonial garrisons with more resources, namely farms and manpower, we can all but guarantee stability in the colonies. Atomic research is very nice. Uh, nuclear reactors. Let's go and grab that one. I like that one. Nuclear production. Nuclear ship reactor. That sounds really cool. Nope. Not check, touch, touching this one. Nope. Nope. Tanganyika, Kenya. Nope. Please. We're already at 0% for all these. There is no unrest. Fake news, man. Fake news. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, okay. And then approach Iran. Oh, with some choppers. Thank you very much. Dragonflies. Yes, please. And ensure the stability, which takes almost two months to do, which is kind of crazy, but whatever. Approach Iran. I mean, oh, the Greater Gothic Reich. The question of Iran, Persia or Iran, has increasingly become a pivotal nation in the region, while traditionally falling between Russia and German, or Russian and British spheres of influence. The collapse of the Soviet Union in our past weakness has left somewhat of a power vacuum. The previous ruler, Rez Shah, made little secret of his pro-German leanings, though we could do little about it without heavy-handed options, though he is now gone. His drift towards Nazi Germany still lasts, and doubt still remains as to whether his son, the young Shah Mohammed Reza Pahlavi, shares his convictions. Many are calling for decisive action on our part, with backing from the U.S. to make sure the links between Iran and Germany grow no stronger. In addition, this situation raises another more cynical opportunity. Iran is one of the largest oil producers in the world, while Anglo-American corporations have some fraction of control over the oil supply. This is limited and has been increasingly pushed back. If we want to take control of Iran in one fell swoop, we could demand control over the Persian oil fields are handed over in a much more comprehensive level to Western companies. Leave them alone. Demand the cut ties with Germany. End of ties and control of oil. Let's do that one. That sounds like fun. Um, supply is actually not very good right there, so I'm actually going to go ahead and boost that up maybe a little bit more. We'll see. And just in case, this is probably really bad, but sent in the tanks just in case. Just in case. Iran refuses. Despite her encouragement, the Iranian government has steadfastly refused to yield on her demands, labeling them a threat to their sovereignty and condemning Anglo-American imperialism. Outraged at our demands, it is likely that the regime will pursue an even more pro-German policy going forwards. Our two choices are two. Either we do nothing, take the loss, and allow Persia to fall further into the Nazi sphere, or we intervene more directly, despite the risks that that kind of action would bring. You guys are already here, so head on over to Iran. I know everyone wants to go to Iran this time of year. Everyone loves the Iranians and totally wants to control the country, so what's, that's a lot of carriers. Wow. Um, we have a lot of carriers. Don't get me wrong, I love it, but still. Uh, give us a couple days before we do this one, so that'll be good. Um, please don't tell me about decolonization. I don't want to deal with that right now. Please, 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 please. Nine days left. Eight days left. Seven days. Oh, we're getting slightly some fuel. It's not too bad. Daily gains 2,000, and we're using quite a bit. Oh, uh, no. I'm not doing independence for Sierra Leone. Nope. That is fake news. I hope we don't lose everything here, because you guys are still taking forever trying to get into here. So, second Anglo-Persian War. Hey, man, I didn't want this. They wanted this. I just want to control their oil, man. I don't know what you're talking about. I just want their oil. 
moving through Iraq. The way to purge is through Iraq. While the forces moving through the territory m m may not be taken too kindly, they are too weak to stop us. What do you mean, sovereignty? Fake news. Colonial cooperation. Given the vast nature of our empire, it's very difficult for us to rule all these lands directly. In order to ease our burdens, we should employ the help of native collaborators, who can take up some of the work of maintaining the colonies. Go straight for the capital. Oh. Oh, and these guys are starting out. How do you... How does this nation get more manpower? They have 55,000, which isn't too bad. But, like... Can they core actually a lot of stuff up here? I have to play as Hager sometime in this mod. I really have to. Um, We could stop them there, but I think we'll be okay for now. Uh, you guys just go on ahead. I know supplies are going to be really bad here. That's why I want to increase the naval base as much as possible. But we'll see. Alright, they have someone down there too. We took Tehran, which is good, good, good. Tepriz should be ours soon. We have to choose to go up there. Nope. Not today. Colonial cooperation will be very good. You know what? If our colonies want to become independent, then so be it. We'll just find new colonies. How dare you. This is so sad. So sad. Julius Neyeri. Probably feeling okay, but still. Alright, cool. Let's go on home. Um, I'm going to send you guys like all here-ish. And all right here ish. There you go. And you guys, thanks for coming by, guys. I know you love Africa, so go back. Colonial cooperation, limited self government. We can also provide the colonies with some amount of autonomy under our dominion. We also reduce the logistical load of governance for all and provide our colonial populations with limited sense of self determination. Victory over Iran. We've taken and secured all of Persia through a military intervention, and Mohammed Rezi Pahlavi has been overthrown and forced into exile. Now comes the question of what we do with the country now that we control it. The first option is to simply install a loyal government that will be under our watch. History has shown that the Pahlavi dynasty cannot be trusted to rule Persia and not drift towards our enemies. And so a restoration of the old Qajar dynasty is on the table. The current head of the house of Qajar, Fereldun Nazir Qajar, could be installed as Persia's new Shah under tight leash from London and Washington. The second option is similar with Fereldun Mirza. Mirza being installed as ruler, but we could also occupy the Khuzestan region in Persia, ostensibly to protect the Arab population in Khuzestan. The region holds Iran's largest oil reserves, and a direct occupation of this region could provide us direct control over these resources, as well as another base in the region. Finally, we could put these problems away for later, and occupy Persia directly for now, though this could certainly be met with hostility and cause greater strain and instability in our nation. Um, you know, you can have Khuzestan-ish, maybe? How, how, is it, how is it over here? Khuzestan, we like Khuzestan. I'm probably saying that completely wrong. No, there you go, you know that one. Oh, wait. Oh, was the other one that we get that? Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, hopefully, we still get some fuel. That's fine. Now, that's pretty nice. Not gonna lie. That is yum yum hour. The big yum yum. Alright, not bad, but we do want to make sure we give them enough equipment. Are we missing anything here? We got plenty of guns, so help offset the amount of oil they're giving us. And for independence, you guys can have 34 12 guns. It's not much, but it's a start of something. It's definitely a start. Convoy escorts, cool. Loading airfield, nice. And then colonial cooperation, limited self-government, improve. I want to get through this stuff first. We'll see what happens. I'm not really sure there's a lot of stuff left for the campaign. So, yeah, we'll do the best we can. Keep making more stuff. These guys really just... America just really takes... Who? Talheimer, I thought you were a man. Yeah, maybe you are. Maybe you're not. I don't know. Austrian problems... What do you have? What do you mean you have Austrian problems? You don't control any part of Austria. Um, relief, the relief, the chairwoman. How are you giving her relief? Like, I she looks kind of old, man. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd want to be giving her relief. Oh, Rossi Wolfstein becomes leader of the Revolutionary Communist Party. Okay, strengthen the council. Spots us this legacy. Oh, new Socialist Republic doesn't look too bad though. Cool. And limited self-government. Oh, Mosley, doing the best you can for the country. Let's do containment of Syria next. We can do this on, but I do want to get some more stuff going on. The social nationalist regime in Syria has expressed a desire to expand Syrian control of the Levant, echoing German demands of Europe in the 30s. We must not repeat the mistakes of Chamberlain. The Syrian menace must be continu contained. Thus, the Nazis gain a foothold in the region, even though the GGR is now gone. Oh, big sadness hours. If I station you guys here, will you actually be able to do anything? Maybe, maybe not. We may have to plan a naval invasion as well, so we might have to go from here... Port Said to Beirut and go from Nicosia to there and then there. Or well, whatever. 
Good luck. See what you can do. Um, proof working conditions. Let's do that. We have enough PP for that, anyways. Don't do that too, because we can. Do that because we can, because we have enough PP. Um, uh, that's not too bad. Can we get anyone that gives us anything else? De I like the decryption. Land for construction speed means nothing to us, really, so. A fascist. Doesn't really help us there. That doesn't help us either. No, a lot of these guys don't really help us, I'll be honest. There's a lot of dudes here that we can't really choose. Um, decryption, overall, the decryption guy is probably the best choice for us right now. Guarantee Israel Palestine, though although we used to have it under a mandate. The Confederation of Israel Palestine emerged in the wake of our exit from the region in the early 40s. Its existence is certain by the Syrian national state as such. A guarantee of their independence on our part would cool Syrian be belligerence. Probably. Probably. So about halfway through that. I love that we're still in war economy. This one, I like the extra PP game, but hurts construction speed. National social that's basically the same dude. Fascist national socialist Arnold Lees? He's another corrupt, corruptocrat. Hmm. That's not bad. That guy's actually pretty good. Compared to us, we still get some PP. We lose some good. We're going to get Let's go with him, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Corrupt, corruptocrat. Now we're 15 and 5. The containment of Syria. Syria, under its fascist and Nazi backed regime, is by far the largest threat to the Middle East. And especially to our own interests. We should make sure to build up relations to countries around them to attempt to contain this menace. Fascism must be contained. Yeah! Even though 30% of our government or people like fascism. So, and we're led by Sir Oswald Mosley. So, yeah. Hey, but happened in 1958, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia requests assistance. Our request, which came in the mail, uh, has arrived at the capital and in the hands of our leader, which this time was from the Serbs. Why, the leader said calmly as he opened the letter written by the leader's clumsy hand, and arriving at the part where he asked them for a few outdated plans that we don't need as much of the Serbs and yet little to think about. There you go. You can ask some stuff. Uh, Yugoslavia, you're looking kind of small. Ah, uh, Mikhailovich. The VSNS. Cool. State religion, orthodox dominance. That's kind of cool. And then, I guess, fortify Cyprus. We shall maintain direct rule over the Mediterranean island of Cyprus, but our garrison there has sent us reports about their lack of supplies and soldiers. Given how the island's location is of supreme strategic value, it is in our interest to bolster our presence there. Very cool. Unfortunately, how many more days do we have for this? Two days left? That's not too bad. And then, okay. Yes, we guarantee the independence. Ooh, that actually good down here. Is that the Kingdom of Jerusalem? Confederal districts. All right. All right. Not bad. Not bad. All right, then. TA coordinated air trading. In an effort to coordinate and improve training of pilots in the airports of the main TA powers, the tr Canadians have introduced a coordinated training program. This will improve the skill of our pilots and those of our allies. Very cool. And actually, we have enough fuel for now, so how about you train indefinitely? Until we run out of fuel, pretty much. After we fortify Cyprus, I guess we're going to improve living standards? Why not? Oh no, let's stop the troublemakers. We won't get rid of those people. For the past couple of years, Marxist and nationalist agitators have been organizing and growing across our empire. They present an excessive existential threat to our rule in these places, and they must be eliminated for the good of the Empire. Oh, uh, go do that. That's fine. Do we have any more planes, perhaps, that we can maybe throw out there and uh, train? Yes. Oh, quite a bit. Yes. Uh, send half of you guys to Malta. Thank you very much. Get rid of the troublemakers. We don't need troublemakers here. I might do this one last, just because we can, and then improve living standard standards. Poor living conditions are fertile grounds for the development of resentment and revolution amongst our colonial population. To counteract this, we should look into improving colonial living standards somewhat in order to ensure that the people living there do not rise up against us, because we've already lost enough. We already have lost enough. Uh, how are we doing? 15-7. It's not great. Slowly losing more fuel. Um, we can't really replace... Oh, I mean, we can replace him. Yeah, I mean, that's not too bad. We had this guy, as I said, last episode. There's nothing... In, no guy here that really, like... Diana, Mitford's a fascist, huh? Um, gives us any more... That's not bad. More daily army speeds are actually pretty nice. But, I don't know. There's not really much here that we can really do about this. You, we changed. You, I kind of still want to change. A Prince of Terror. All we have is this guy, though. So, 5% more consumer goods. We get slightly more political power. Resources goes down. Factors go down. Um, I want... I want those uh, consumer goods. New generation of missiles, yes please. So now we're at 1512. That's a little better. Not bad. Resource wise, we probably did take a little bit of it, but we're actually still okay. Um, let's take a look here. You stop training. You go home. Have a good time. You stop training as well and go home. You 
improve the living standards of the people. And then you do the same thing and go home. Hang on, have a good time. Four carriers. We don't have enough planes on these guys, do we? Where are you guys at? Uh, what do we need? Six, oh, it's out of 100. Oh, that sucks. What's that? Huh. It's weird. There you go. Is that 60? 40. Something like that. That should be okay. Hunt and destroy is very nice. Master X are very nice as well. Excuse me. I know time's going on, but still. Uh, thank you. And then thank you. We're going to have the best Navy. The best Navy. And then follow up the Governor's General's Conference. Or let's appease the colonial subjects first. Danish monarchy restored. Properties in London, Oxford, scholarships for the children, and a great deal of tax breaks. By providing the native arist aristocracies with direct benefits, we can further align them to our interests and prolong the life of our empire. For as long as we possibly can until people are just like, no, we don't want to do this anymore. Hey, 15, 15, 8. That's pretty nice. That's actually pretty good. So... Yeah, just these guys. I don't want to hurt us. Consumer goods. Everything hurts consumer goods. That barely hurts us, but still, that still hurts us. It's just not worth doing it. I understand it's there for a reason, but it's just still not worth doing, man. We get more PP, though, even though we don't really need more PP. Currently, we get how much? 1.62. Not a lot. Chen Chang assassinated. Another domino in the Chinese political mess falls. Very cool. I guess we could do people here. Open Seas Doctrine. Eh. Marines, I like that. You get more organization stocks, second heart attack. That's pretty good. Uh, so, oh, but sorry, efficiency. We have so many carriers that we can improve upon. I love that marine thing, but mm, power projection, ten percent more na max naval range factor. Not bad. Chief of the army, armored spearhead, guns and butter. I like the organization, but it's only three percent. Not much. Decisive battle. I like that. Harold Alexander. He, that's a lot of attack. But, the, but attack only works on attack, where organization supply consumption works regardless if you're attacking your defense. I'll can like, thank you. The Governor General's Conference. In order to better coordinate colonial policy across our empire, we should host a conference of all the different colonial governors. Putting all of our imperial representatives under one roof will allow us to craft a common imperial plan. Which sounds pretty smart to do. Cool. Alright, 54 days left for that one. 100 command power. I'd like to get more nukes, but eh, 15, 15, 10 is not too bad right now. And we got about four days left. And then we'll choose another person. And then the Queen's Empire's Tour. To display the renewed unity of our realm to the world, the Queen should take a tour of all of our different colonial possessions. A British monarch on the steps of the Taj Mahal on the coast of Zanzibar will be a powerful symbol of stability. Even though I don't think we're really allowed to go in there. But we'll remove limited self-governance, huh? That's kind of nice, actually. Uh, where is this from? Here, thank you. All right. Oh, that's from the research stuff too. Limited self governance. So we lose five percent stability. We lose five percent factory output, but we do get ten percent more political power, which is, I mean, that's okay. We don't really need it right now, but that's okay. Who do we have here? Henry Maitland Wilson, which we can still choose. Okay, we get more speed and attack and defense for armor. Naval expert Andrew Cunningham. Spotting speed, fleet coordination, sub attack and defense, capital armor. That's a, that's pretty good actually. Air combat expert though. 10% more air experience gain. Eh, overall, I'd probably choose Naval Expert. Because we still, you know, rule Britannia. And no, 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 I, no. Ugandans don't deserve independence. They're not even part of their faction. Of course, then again, we're not part of our own faction either. Oh, what is Italy up to right now? Oh, I'll do that one first. Special Forces, yes. Uh, actually, no, 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 that's not good enough. Well, we do have a lot of paratroopers. I'm not really using them. Let's get this one. More ground support and then more attack defense. Or no, soft attack and hard attack for our army. Overall, that's really good, actually. All right, Italy, what are you up to? Benito, always vigilant. You stay all hanging out. I'm surprised America didn't go to war with you. America likes to go to war with fascists. Viva il Duce. Always vigilant. A defensive position. Deployment maneuvers. Army mechanization. The Governor General's Conference. The conference of all the general governors general of the British Empire to look at... Oh, God, no. Uh, the reforms necessary to hold the empire together in the future is sure to improve imperial stability. We must invite the people who maintain our empire to London in order to discuss ways to keep it together for another hundred years. Long live the Queen, even though the Canadians already left. <sighs> the despicable Canadians. Despicable. Actually, this point, just do all this stuff. I don't care. There you go. There you go. Cool. And improve. Oh, we already improved. Well, we have the production of the infrastructure going along here, which is pretty nice. Uh, we'll go there next. I'm ready to invade Syria. Like, let's invade. Let's bomb the crap out of the Syrians. Please. Please. I beg of you. Let me bomb somebody. 
I want to feel like an imperialist, please. Don't tell me the British Empire's strength's waning, please. We do have a lot of build here, though. What is that? Like, that province is by itself. I don't understand, like... That, I think that happens in Vicky too. Like, is that a special region? That's probably a special region, like, with a lot of population or something. Special unique culture or something like that. Tanjanika needs to get bombed. I'll be honest. Straight up. How dare you get independence? How dare you? You want... You demand independence now? Then we won't assist you, and you will forever, or at least for a long time, have a god-awful economy. But you probably have a really high birth rate. So, it's a trade-off. Oh, the Commonwealth of Nations, or Commonwealth of Australia, not bad. I don't want to forget Hong Kong. You know, I thought the Chinese would attack us for Hong Kong eventually, but then again, they did lose in Vietnam, so. Alright, not bad. And we have some stuff over here. Yes, South America. Good. Alright, do we sell Jamaica? Yes, we do. Put those Jamaicans down. Even though Jamaica seems kind of nice, cool. Go to. The Royal Air Force, the founder in the shadows of the First World War, the RAF, has defended Britain's skies for almost 40 years now. But there's so much work to be done if we want to keep up with other powers on the world stage. Cool. Um, yeah, independence for Ceylon. Now, nah, okay. So, yeah, as you can tell us by the title of the video, there's not much left here for the campaign, so. Um, I, hmm, we'll see. Finalized military doctrine. We have finished determining our military doctrine. It's time to look to the future now and hope our new tactics pay off on the battlefield. Even though I think we might have gone to war with everyone we possibly can in this campaign. 15, 15, 14, where are we for GDP? We're still third. We're really improving ourselves. Oh, we're actually... Ch we're above China. But the USSR has... Oh, I didn't realize that. They've annexed a whole bunch of people here already. So that's why they're just exploded in terms of GDP and stuff like that. Oh, what are the polls? The cult of the Iron Hussar. That's cool. Mobilization speed, recruitable population factor, stability, war support. Pretty nice. A German People's Republic. Rosie Wolfstein. Do you have a biography? No? Okay, then. Reconstruction period, and then Free Socialist Republic, which we saw earlier. Carry a battle groups? Not bad, so we're done with that stuff for now. Uh, you want a frigate hole? Sure, why not? It's already 59, I didn't even realize that. Cool. Finalized military doctrine. This should be land doctrine, but whatever. The Royal Air Force. Mm-mm. <clears throat> The war in Europe ended too quickly for the RAF to see significant action, and its actions against Japan in the Pacific was relatively limited compared to the much broader campaign carried by the U.S. As a result, the Air Force has had a relative lack of battle experience compared to those of the other major powers. However, it is key to both Britain's defense and her power projection against any future action in Europe. And must be bolstered. Fortunately, the tools are there. Britain has a strong history of aeronautics innovation and pioneering the use of the new jet engine. It is this technological and strategic innovation that will turn the RAF into a deadly force ready for the challenges ahead. We will return. Eventually, and then lessons of Dunkirk. Since the failure at Dunkirk, we have learned the mistakes of the past are only that mistakes. The prestige or the prestige of the British Empire or the British Army shall not be tainted by this, and a new force shall emerge stronger than ever the British Army. Give more war support, that's really good, and finish off that stuff. Very good. We still have full fuel. You train until you're dead. Um, I don't want to do this because it hurts our cities for now, but we can still do it. She is looking man, oh man. If only to be British for a day. Um, I, I wish we would go to war with someone else. I want to go to war with the Syrians. I love Syrian conflicts. Here, Baghdad. I don't want you to have independence, so there you go. Uh, anything else? Promise of peace? No, that's okay. That stuff is okay. We need excavation for three to do that, huh? Kind of sucks. Even more... Oh, Jesus Christ. There's so many carriers. Which isn't a problem, but still. There we go. Now we see it. Integrated combo defense. We're done with that stuff. Any other tanks? We can grab that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Hold on. The, the Greeks are still killing each other. How have they survived for this long? Revolution of communists. It's almost 1960, guys. Greece. Fascists versus communists. N can't say I'm really surprised. I'll be honest. Can't really say I'm surprised. Finalized the military doctrine and lessons of Dunkirk. But you know what? We need you. We need you, an iconic line from Lord Kitchener's poster responsible for enlisting so many brave young men during the Great War. With the lack of new recruits since the Great War, and another failure at Dunkirk, we need to begin a new recruitment campaign. Sounds pretty good. Uh, anything else here? That's really good, actually. They're all authoritarians, but that's fine. Yeah, just keep doing stuff. Decryption's fine with us. Civilian and factory construction speeds are really good as well. America, for the love of God, this is disgusting. I know you want to have power projection. I know you want to contain the fascist threat. But at what cost? 
the cost of the Germans, and the Austrians, and the Czechs, and the Poles that are still living in here, as well as the French, as well as other people probably too. Huh. Probably. 15, 15, 12. Not that we're really improving too much. Are we done? We're done with the land doctrine. Or naval doctrine, I should say. Research speed. Transistor competing. Thank you. Ground support integration. Key point bombings. Bomb the living crap out of them. Please, please, please. Yeah. There's not really a lot here in, in the Thousand Week Rack. It just seems like... It just doesn't feel like there's a whole lot here we can do. Still training, which is nice, but still. There you go. Have fun. Philip Vaughn? Van? How's Japan doing? They renounced the right to war earlier. Ichiri Hatayama. Alright. Liberal Democratic Party established. The police coup. I know that they always go with this armament. Unless they choose, like, was it the anarchist route or something like that? So, yeah. It is what it is, but still. Invisible ink? That sounds like a tattoo. Invisible ink. That sounds like a tattoo company. There's gotta be a place like that. But we need you. You, me, and you. Cool. The lessons of Dunkirk. For a generation, the word Dunkirk has filled British society with fear and shame. Memories and images of those few lucky men to escape home, broken and traumatized by defeat. While hundreds of thousands of their comrades remain in prison by the Nazis as forever etched into the consciousness of those that remember the war of 1940. Yet with every mistake, even as one as great of one was that was Dunkirk, comes an opportunity to learn and improve. After years on the back foot, cowering behind the channel and dreading the day Hitler reneged on the 1940 armistice, Britain has regained its footing in the military prowess and is ready to yet again go on the offensive. The lessons of this military disaster and other experiences of modern warfare have been learned and learned well. Innovation and investment has transformed the British armed forces into a fighting force far more fit for the modern age than it ever was, and our British military planners are much more confident in the ability of the resources. Britain may not be the superpower it once was, but the British people are sure as heck wish willing and able to fight as if it still is. Britain is back? But for how long? That is the question. For how long is Britain going to be back? Are you still... Oh, Benazio here. I gotta play as Romania. They look really interesting. Uh, Mikhail? You have the Regency, which doesn't look very good. Um, Hungary is led by a guy in sunglasses. That goes SS Aldenstadt. You? Do you have a focus tree? They kind of do. I guess we gotta take Slovenia sometime, huh? You, me, and Slovenia? What could be better than that? Spain. Franco's... I thought he died. They have a unique focus tree, too. Oh, that looks so cool. Expand tourism possibilities. That looks really cool. That looks like something, something out of Old World Blues or Fallout. Yeah, okay. There's, there's a lot of different nations here we could play. Opening up to the west to Germany. Italy. I don't know about that, man. I mean, Germany... Germany isn't feeling too good. I mean, the Germany Germany that we have is doing okay, but, like... They're not saying eye to eye you, but... After this, you know what? Screw it. We'll do independence for Ceylon. We ruled the island of Ceylon directly since the end of the Napoleonic Wars, but it seems to have spent its usefulness. Some in our government have entertained the idea of giving the island full independence in order to prevent it from falling into Indian hands. I don't know, man. I mean... It's so sad. Every time I play a Thousand Week Rack and play the United Kingdom, it's always a little depressing seeing decolonization. Ugh. Oh, what do you guys, destroyer leaders? The Royal Vendu just a military branch, so. Containment of Nazism? Space operation sounds really cool down here. Oh, back the French. Cool, air land strikes, and then combined blitz. Very nice. Oh, we're out of fuel. Okay, so then you guys stop. You guys are, are probably done. Oh, Mussolini! Oh, okay, well, there goes Mussolini. Bye, Mussolini, have a good day. Have fun in wherever you're gonna go. Head home, guys, head home. We don't have enough fuel for now. Navy requires 5,100 a day, which is quite a bit. And then you guys stop doing that as well and go home. You're probably very well trained. There we go. Getting more stuff. Plastic explosives. Independence for Ceylon. Caroline Beatty. Cool. The island of Ceylon, the last British holding of the Indian subcontinent, is rapidly becoming unsustainable territory. Discontent grows and threatens to boil over into rebellion. It is something clear that something must be done. And independence is the unobvious, terrible solution. This would not only take the issue of offer hands, but prevent the Indian Republic expanding further. Create the nation of Sri Lanka. Uh, but do they deserve it? Do they deserve it? Maybe. Airbase expansion. Airbase has determined how much air power we can yield in the event of a conflict. It is essential that we are able to accommodate the increasing volume of our air force. Well, you got your mustache there, Dia Senanayake. Friggin' holes, very nice. And go with that one, thank you. And then go with, doesn't even matter, just stop pausing. Uh, disperse industry too, because we can. 15, 15, 10? Not enough. I went down, huh? Oh, because we're doing some more, um, uh, stuff there. Oh, Kingdom of Italy. So, what is Italy up to then? Umberto II. Hello, Umberto. Transistor computing, yes, please. And then mass production, because we can. Plastics, my friends. Plastics. 
and their new pilots. We cannot expand our Air Force. If we do not have a matching amount of pilots, we must set aside funds and resources for the recruitment of potential Air Force pilots among the young people and military cadets of our country. Balbo, he's smoking, it looks like. That's not good for your lungs, but you know what? You do you. Well, I have a feeling that the Russian Republic is not going to win. When I played them, they were not easy to play as, but... 45 million manpower under Konev versus about 100,000, roughly, under Vlasov. 60 divisions versus 260. I have a feeling who's going to win there. I have a good feeling, but I could be wrong. New pilots. As we're watching the world burn. At least parts of the world, of course. Go ahead and train if you need to. Bonard Montgomery. Um, throw, throw a plan and then undoing defender would be good. Operations. You think MI6 or the intelligence agency of the British Empire or the United Kingdom would be stronger than this, but I guess not. So now we're done with all this stuff over here. And I just want to see what's going to happen to Russia and then maybe we'll call it a campaign. The Royal Navy. An island nation, our most important military asset is the Royal Navy, one which at one point confidently sailed in all the seas of the earth. However, with this strange new world has brought us new challenges, and our Navy has to change in order to meet them. Because I want to get the event about the British Navy done, so. 1556, not bueno. Uh, let's take a look at the casualties, perhaps, if we can. Not bad. Oh, they're, doing, they're doing better than I thought they would so far. Up to 57 divisions max now, and 292. Jesus Christ, that's a lot, guys. I'm rooting for the Russian Republic. Can I actually send volunteers? That'd be really cool. No, let's send Natasha Shea, because we can. Oh, we get a lot of it. Oh, look at that. That's nice. I like that a lot. Oh, we can't get up. What the heck? Iran. Iran. What is your problem? We liberated you to give us more fuel. There you go. Have 900. It's not much, but we'll do the best we can with it. Um... Yeah, 15, 15, 15, 1, not bad. The Royal Navy. Followed up with Reinforced Home Seas. I kind of like that one, that seems pretty nice. Radar, radar, radar. Oh, the waters which surround the island of Britain are our best natural defense against a foreign invasion, but they also could be exploited by our enemies. By combating more ships or committing more ships to patrolling the home seas, we can ensure that they are never threatened on that front arena. Good. Oh, that's sad. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much here left. This is so sad. America. Is that a core? Calling. Okay, they're calling states. Got a lot of compliance down there. Um, up to 100 divisions, maybe. 1 to 2 million manpower on limited uh, recruitment. Navy is pretty, pretty decent. They're like us, but probably even bigger. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. That and the... Uh, what is the war like for the Greeks? Guys, the kingdom, you've lost a quarter million versus 55,000. Do you really think you're going to win at this point? Hey, this was an issue, though. They still have a lot of manpower for the commies. They have a lot of manpower for the fascists. Holy crap. But after the Royal Navy, we'll do that one. And I just want to see these guys die off. Let's we'll see what happens. I guess we can see what's happening. We've got slightly more. Oh, they stopped attacking. God dang it, guys. Come on. But realistically, I think we're pretty much done here. Um, we'll read about this, and then we'll just click on through a lot of the focuses. The Royal Navy. Once upon a time, the Royal Navy was an undisputed ruler of the waves, a stronger than the next two navies combined. Today, while Britain remains a formidable naval power, <clears throat> that is no longer the case with Command of the High Seas having passed in large part to Britain's ally in Washington, or former ally. Britain's once invincible navy, naval prestige too is damaged with a lackluster performance in the early stages of the Pacific War, being only partially rectified by the later, more successful joint action with the U.S. against Japan, of course. Britain's navy is still very large, more than enough to guard the channel and its shores and make any German invasion very, very difficult. But many of the ships are old, and the fleet is the holes in need of reform and modernization. True naval conflict with Germany, more than the minor skirmishes of 1939-40, will require Britain to thoroughly prepare its fleet so that, with her allies, she can rule her ways once again. We will return, and now it's time to open up commands. And if, I'll let you read these if you want to, so expand the radar network. There just really isn't much here for us to do. We're pretty much done with all the content here. Uh, I like air superiority. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. And that one too. And working with the Royal Navy, which actually is not too bad for a naval AA attack. Fighter designs. Working with the British Army, which is still not bad. More ground support. I like that. And protect the British skies, which looks pretty good, actually, too. That looks pretty good. Home the, oh, reinforce the home seas. Secure the trade, which is pretty good. New naval doctrine. Modernize subs. I prefer destroyers. If you want to read about that, go ahead. Docker facilities, a modern fleet, anti sub maneuvers, carrier designs, naval expansion program, naval aviation, defender merchants, which isn't too bad either. Expand the Royal Marines, and Britannia rules away, which looks very, very good as well. But that is the entire.
content for the Thousand Week Reich United Kingdom. If you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. This is the final look at the GDP, which we did manage to hold onto a third spot with the Chinese very, very closely coming behind us in fourth place, followed by the French. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great, great rest of your day.